Hello and welcome to Atheism vs. Logic. I hope you're having a good day. I want to talk to you about keys because I think that life is about people's personal desires. You know, some people just want to be where they are and they don't want to know anything else. And so this page and, and YouTube channel is really just about giving you the keys to unlock doors just in case you want to unlock those doors. I can't make you want to do that. If you are perfectly satisfied in the certain way of thinking that you are in, and even if you knew it was wrong, you wanted to stay there, then I couldn't help you. Really, the only thing I can do is offer you keys to open doors. Imagine you're in a room, and there's a door in that room, and that door has a lock. And then someone slips you a key underneath that door. Well, it's up to you then to open that door. And so that's what I'm offering here is I'm offering you keys in case you want to open the door and know what reality is. And so let's get into it. They conveniently all start with peas. So the first one is proteins and you're probably tired of hearing this but I'm not tired of saying it. Proteins prove the existence of a creator. Proteins are the key. If you want to abandon atheism for science, for logic, then study proteins, and proteins will lead you to the undeniable truth. We were created. Machines cannot make themselves, and machines cannot work together without being programmed to do so. And that is exactly what we see in all life on Earth. If you look at what's happening in the, on the cellular level, the, if you look what's happening inside the cell on the molecular level, would probably be a better way of saying it, then you will see so many different machines working together. The next one is parables. If you really want to know that who the creator is, or if you want to know if Jesus is that creator, then study his parables. You know, he said it himself, my sheep hear my voice. And so if, if Jesus is the one who created you and and you could identify that, well, then you would identify it by hearing what he has to say. You know, think of it like, uh, like an experiment to see what liquid will get a gasoline engine to go. You could test different liquids, and if you put gasoline in the gasoline engine and it started to go, then you would know that gasoline causes a gas engine to go. Well, this is kind of how it is with the words of Jesus. There is something about them to me, and I've identified it as the words of Jesus, and there's something about the words of Jesus that that, that give me life, give me energy, explains things, they make sense. And so that's another key. Now that's between you and God. I know that's very personable, personal. The next one is Paul. Just studying the life of Paul was amazing for me. I grew up in church, but uh, it wasn't until I read the New Testament for myself that, that I really had an idea of what Christianity was. Isn't that funny? I grew up in church, but it wasn't until I read the New Testament for myself that I really understood what Christianity was. And a big part of that was reading about the life of Paul in the book of Acts and the passion he lived with. And then next, when I was a youth pastor, I, I, I took the the youth group through the book of Galatians. And man, I highly recommend you read the book of Galatians just to understand what Christianity really is. It, it drove home for me something that I believe bothers a lot of Christians. A lot of Christians are worried about, um, are they really saved? You know, what, what about their sin? Um, have they sinned too much to, uh, to go to heaven? And man, when, when I studied the book of Galatians, then I never doubted my salvation after that. I realized that it's not about my behavior. It's about accepting what Jesus Christ did for me on the cross. And then if you read other parts of the New Testament, then you'll understand that pride is the worst thing in the world. Pride is what causes us to hurt each other. And by accepting Jesus, you've got to drop your pride. And, and it fills us. It fills us with the energy to serve others because God served us. The next one is protection. We've got to understand, and you've got to understand, to understand Christianity, that God is protecting himself from us. Isn't that interesting? 
I learned this by studying, well, really by, I, I wrote a commentary on Matthew, but it, it says it even better in the sixth chapter of John, where Jesus comes across as a very harsh person by talking about communion. It is, it's literally like he's talking about cannibalism, that they have to drink his blood and eat his flesh. And so he doesn't mind being misunderstood. And that really unlocks a lot of things for the believer in Jesus, that God is protecting himself from us. He is, he is trying to say what he should say in order that those who do trust him will still trust him and those who do not want to trust him will get offended. I made a video on this called Offended by Jesus, but it's really helpful to understand this that God wrote the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament in such a way that if someone just wanted to remain skeptical, they would get offended and they would leave. But for those of us who trust him, it would not be too offensive. His sternness, his coming across as potentially offensive didn't offend us. I, I didn't leave Jesus when I read John chapter 6. I didn't leave Jesus when I read the Old Testament, and I have read it. And so understanding that really helps because people are asking for undeniable evidence and God's not going to give it. Of course, he's given us undeniable evidence that we were created, but Jesus has not given us undeniable evidence that he is the creator. If you read John chapter 6, you will realize that Jesus is protecting himself from those who want his stuff, but they don't want him. And so he says something that can be taken the wrong way. He is, he has said things in the Bible that could be misunderstood to protect himself from some people. Hello.